up the video quality in your Zoom or Teams meeting. Perhaps you wanna start streaming, but find the quality coming from your webcam lacking. Anyone that works with video will tell you the most important thing is the lighting. So today we're gonna to look at two new lighting products released specifically targeting those who are working from home and streaming. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, it's Ryan with The Smart House. And on today's video, we're gonna take a look at the new Logitech Lytra Light and the new Elgato Streamlight Mini. So typically for my videos, when I'm recording on my computer, I use this Godox 60 watt light with a newer softbox. Now that's a bit of an overkill for my setup. It's actually quite large. And for most people, it's way overkill. Plus I wanna free this light up so I can use it elsewhere in the house when shooting more location shots or doing product shots down in the basement. So I had been using a cheaper USB powered light on my other monitor to balance out the light coming from this softbox over here. I would also use it when doing Teams calls using the web camera. That way I wouldn't have to fire up this giant light at night, which would basically blind me. But what I really wanted was something that I could control using Home Assistant or the Stream Deck. And that's why I decided to take a look at both of these lights. Now, originally I was hoping you could control both of these externally. However, as you'll see in my review, one of them can only be controlled using their proprietary software. So currently, I have a button on my Stream Deck. When I press that button, it turns on my main recording light, turns on the TV, sets the lights in the room the way I want them, and also launches my recording software. But I was having to manually turn on that second light and then set it to whatever I wanted to to get the right lighting for my video. So that's why I wanted to explore these two smart lights to see if either one of them would work for my setup. So in today's video, I'm gonna go over the features of both the Logitech and the Elgato light and show you which one I'd recommend for a particular type of user. So let's start with the Logitech. So this is a Logitech Lytra Glow. I'm assuming that there'll be more in this series of Logitech lights, but this is the first one. So the Glow features an adjustable bicolor light. You can adjust it from a warm white temperature around 2700 Kelvin, all the way up to a bright, more like daylight color, which is about 6500 Kelvin. They do claim it has a 93 CRI, which means you can re reproduce fairly accurate the color temperature you set, which is really important if you're gonna be matching this with other lights in a room. Not everyone's gonna need this, but it's nice to know what, what that rating is. So it also has 10 levels of adjustable dimming controlled with these manual controls on the back. One side lets you control the dim level, the other one allows you to control the temperature. So you don't need to open up any software to adjust this unless you want to. In the middle is the power button that allows you to turn the light on and off. Now this is powered from an included USB-C cable. That USB-C to A cable is in about five feet, which should let you connect it to either a monitor power supply or to the back of your computer if necessary. Another nice thing about this light is it includes this variable mount. Now it's designed to be hooked off the back of a monitor and it can adjust up a few inches to give you a little bit of extra height if you need it to get over a larger monitor or if you want to just get the right position. You can also turn the light mostly to one direction and tilt it up and down. So it does give you some flexibility about where you can mount this particular light and get the right lighting for your particular scene. Another nice thing is it includes some integrated cable management on the back that allows you to snap that USB cable down and keep it secure, leading, leading to a nice clean setup. In addition, you can remove the light from the mount, exposing a quarter 20 mount on the bottom of the light. So if you wanted to connect this to a custom stand or a magic arm for better positioning on your setup. So now that we've taken a look at the hardware itself, let's jump into the software. Now to control this light from your PC, you need to install the Logitech G Keys software hub. Now this is specifically designed for their G series of keyboards and mice, not to be confused with their other series like the NK series or even their master series of mice. It's a totally separate application and one of my big complaints with Logitech is just pick one app. Why do we have to have three different apps if we have three different pieces of hardware? But if you have one of their newer web cameras like the Brio, which I have up here, then this allows you to make setting changes to that as well. Now the current version of software is in the first release and it's fairly limited. It allows you to make custom scenes for different lighting configurations, which would be setting the color temperature and the color brightness. So if you had different scenarios, you could set those for quick swapping in the software. You can also bring up the light and your compatible Logitech camera to be able to test those settings. 
and be able to turn on and off the light from the software. Now, if you want to be able to use this with any, any sort of external input like a keyboard, it has to be a Logitech G series keyboard or mouse compatible with the G Hub software. Now, this is an extreme limitation and one of the disadvantages of this light is you cannot control it with a hotkey combination or using some sort of extra API like other pieces of hardware. So that's definitely a big strike against this light for me. You're not able to use it with anything else. I was hoping that you'd be able to use it with an external piece of software like the Stream Deck, but currently the software is closed and will only allow you to use the G series. So we talk about price point. This is the cheaper of the two at $60 US, which is a nice entry point for somebody looking for a basic light setup that is a little bit more integrated than just one of your inexpensive USB lights you can have off Amazon. All right, so let's take a look at the Elgato Keylight Mini. Now, this light is part of the Keylight series, so they already have some additional key lights that are compatible with the existing software. So this isn't a first generation product. So what sets this apart from the Logitech is that it actually includes a 4,000 milliamp battery built into the unit, which means it can be used without any wires attached to it whatsoever. So having a battery pack built in makes us similar to some of the portable lights that you see content creators use on the road. What sets us apart from one of those is the fact that it is Wi-Fi controllable and also has a studio mode which lets you disable the battery. So like the Logitech, this is an adjustable bicolor light that lets you go from 2700 Kelvin all the way up to 7000 Kelvin. So very similar to the Logitech. It also has different steps of brightness that's controllable using the switch on the side. But on the key light, it only has a single control on the side, letting you change the brightness with the rocker switch, or once you press it in, will allow you to change the color temperature. So it's a single button that allows you to control both instead of the dual buttons like you have on the Logitech. There's also a power switch on the side, which lets you turn the unit on and off, saving battery if you do have it connected to Wi-Fi. Now it does it also includes a long 180 degree USB-C cable that allows for a neat fit here on the side. Another cool feature is this back piece. It is actually magnetic. It allows you to stick to most any metal objects, which gives you another degree of flexibility. Of course, on the bottom is a quarter 20 mount, which I currently have in a cold shoe mount. And then on the back, you'll see a battery indicator and a Wi-Fi indicator. Again, once you set the, the device up and connect it to your Wi-Fi, you're able to control it using the, the Elgato Control software and a stream deck. In addition, it does have direct integration with Home Assistant, which is a nice feature. Now, one thing I will note is this thing was a bear to get connected to my Wi-Fi. And I've heard a lot of people complain about Elgato products connecting to Wi-Fi. So just keep that in mind. If you do have problems with it, you do have to have a dedicated 2.4 gigahertz network to get it to connect and stay connected properly. I'll link to a couple of help articles that assisted me from the community. So one last thing I wanna point out is it does have what's called studio mode on. Once you get it connected to your Wi-Fi and integrate it with Control Center on your computer, you can set it to what's called studio mode where it will require a connection to the USB port to be powered and will bypass the onboard battery. This is great for if you're gonna use this in a streaming setup and you don't want to worry about ruining the battery because it's plugged in all the time. This gives you some flexibility. So if you wanna use it in a studio environment like I have here, you won't have to worry about damaging the battery, but then you can go into the software, kick it back into normal mode, unplug it, and use it as a portable light. So one of the things that the Elgato does not include is any sort of mounting solution. It does come with a quarter 20 mount on the bottom, so you can mount it to anything you want. You can purchase the third party mount, or they do have some options from Elgato itself. Now, you can use something like a magic arm if you want to clamp it onto a monitor mount, or use one of the desktop quarter 20 adapters to be able to connect it to the edge of a desktop. But what I ended up doing was 3D printing a mount. Now, this 3D printed mount was one I found on Thingiverse that is very similar to the Logitech one where it hangs off the back of a monitor and then had a hole in it. So I just took a quarter 20 bolt ran it up through there and ended up putting on a ball head mount with a little cold shoe so that way i can just slide this on tighten it down and i've got a solid mount on my monitor keep that in mind with the price point differences it, you will have to purchase an additional mount or use something you already have in your house so let's quickly talk about price point this is actually priced at hundred dollars which is significantly more than the sixty dollars for the logitech but you do get a few more features making it a multi-role device versus the logitech so now i look at the hardware let's jump in and look at the software Now on the software side, you have to use the Elgato Control Center software, which is a common one if you have other Elgato devices. When you, once you have it in the Control Center software, you can use the Control Center software to make changes to the light, like changing brightness levels, color temperature, turning on and off in the application. But the cool thing is, since it's an Elgato product, you can directly integrate this with your Stream Deck. 
meaning you can take all of those setting keys and add them directly onto the Stream Deck for easy and quick changes while on a video call or doing streaming. Now, in addition to those controls being available in the Stream Deck, once you get the device connected to your Wi-Fi, if you hop into Home Assistant and go to your integrations tab, you'll notice the Keylight Mini shows up as an available integration, which is great because all you have to do is just connect it one time and then the device is available to be controlled in Home Assistant, just like any other light. You can turn it on and off, change brightness, and also change color temperature right from Home Assistant, which leaves a great opportunity for some very cool automations and integrations. All right, so now that we've looked at the features and differences between the lights, let's talk about who I would recommend each light for. Now, if you are a person who is just looking for a basic light for your video calls for work, or if you're gonna have a fixed streaming setup and you just wanna be able to turn the light on and go, then the Logitech is probably gonna be plenty for what you need. The main reason is, is because of the price point being $40 cheaper than the Elgato and the fact that it comes with a mount. It's super nice to be able to just throw it on a laptop screen and be able to have perfect lighting wherever you're at. Now, if you're more of an advanced user and you want a more multi-role device, then maybe the key light meeting would be a better option for you. Because of its Wi-Fi controllability and its flexible input coming from things like Home Assistant or even the Control Center app on iOS or Android, then the Key light mini might be the better option for you because you do get not only a streaming light for a fixed location, but it also doubles as a battery powered light for using on the road. So if you decided to take a look at either one of these devices, let me know in the comments below. I'd be really interested to see how you guys have them set up. I think going forward, I'm gonna be using the key light mini here in my office because I can use it for multiple things, keep it charged up for using it on on location shootings or just being able to control it with my stream deck. I will probably take the Logitech light to work and either I will use it or one of my coworkers will use it. It's not gonna go to waste, but I do think I prefer the Keylight Mini to the Logitech for that reason. So if you found any value in today's video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. That helps the algorithm show it to other users. And if you'd like to see my other review videos, click on this playlist right here. And if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo right here. Thanks again, I'll see you in next week's video.